uh, we're, we're back at ChatGBT. So let's start by giving it a you know simple, generate an ELL compliant lesson plan using the uh, uh, documents provided. Um, so I have uh, two things that I'm uploading here. If you see CC, that I, that's my just internal tracking for uh, Cooler and Colorado standard, and then a random lesson plan. And so I'll show you sort of what I'm uploading to the document or uploading to ChatGPT. So I, I'm giving it a specific uh, ELL strategy. And you can see here it's it's in the form of a PDF. That's what these models are generally best at, Word docs, PDFs. So if you upload these, if you want to upload things to the model to, to have as context, I'd recommend having it as, as PDF. And I know the the, uh, the ELL website often offers these strategies as PDF, so I definitely recommend those. And then the other part is a um, is a lesson plan. So you can see here, uh, it's a pre-prepared uh, lesson plan. And so what I'm gonna ask the model to do is to conform the lesson plan to the ELL strategy that I'm providing it and show how we can use prompt engineering to produce an incrementally better um, artifact. So I'm gonna go back to ChatGPT. And so I'm gonna start with a simple prompt, just like generate an ELL compliant lesson plan uh, using the documents provided. So it's gonna read those documents and it's going to generate a response. And I'll, I'll sort of just like hush up so you folks can, can read through it. But uh, again, like this might be good enough, but there might be some, you know, things left desired. So it might be useful as you, as you read through it to think through, you know, I wish it formatted it like that, or I wish I included that. Um, so I'll pause for just a few seconds for you all to read it. And this is where I'll say, um, you know, Christina is an expert with ELL, um, multilingual learners, and um, Sarah Beth, as a high school teacher, you know, please give your your thoughts too as you're going through this. Pretty long. Uh, so again, um, I, I, unfortunately, I'm not an educator, so I can't really, really uh, grade it. Uh, feel free, Christina, to jump in uh, if, if you have any like thoughts or, or things that stand out to you. Um, sure. Um, so I, I will just say I, I had a chance to kind of play with this a little bit earlier today. And so one of the thoughts I had was like, the lesson is pretty comprehensive. Like it, it looks more like a unit to me in some ways. So I think sometimes that thing where you break down into little parts of it, like you're going to intro this topic of persuasion or arguments and counter arguments, but like taking part of something that you, you're trying to do and, and building off of that is good. Um, and so I think that um, it really does a good job integrating the Coloring Colorado strategy with this, but one of the pieces that seems to be missing a bit was more specifics about like, how do you introduce argument and counter argument? Uh, how are you going to make sure the students understand that um, as they get into their um, thing? So I, I feel like it's something I would probably play with the prompt a little bit to get there. Um, but yeah, but generally it's, yeah, it puts it together very nicely. Awesome, thanks for that. Mm -hmm. um, so, so what I'll do is I'm gonna do the same exact thing. I'm gonna start a new chat, so this is starting fresh. Doesn't have any context of what we what we just did. So I'm gonna add the same two documents and I'm gonna upload a slightly different prompt. So now I'm gonna add that persona thing we talked about, where I'm gonna say, you know, assume the role of a senior educator uh, with decades of experience taking lesson plans and converting them. Um, here's the specific task. So there's a little bit more detail um, and I saw you know, very quick, I saw one of the questions was around like, if you want to tailor it for a specific output, you can definitely say, you know, you're going to assume the role of a senior educator, but you want to tailor it for this specific audience. Uh, for example, like you're, hey, you're going to brief this to uh, your, your your boss or to, you know, uh, leadership or whatever. So how the role that it assumes can be independent for what you're tailoring the artifact for. So I just want to call it out very quickly. Um, so I'll just let this one roll again. Again, it's going to read through the document and it's going to uh, make some changes. I'll call out one thing again, like I instructed it specifically to just run through and uh, give me the specific changes it made before it generates the lesson plan. So just a kind of another example of that, of that it having specific instructions. So, uh, Christina, again, I'll lean on you if you if you want to call out anything um, specific that sounds out to you. Again, these are these are pre-made prompts. Um, but I certainly have to, uh, we'll, there'll be some time afterwards, hopefully, or, or maybe not. Um, or actually, uh, this this will be available on free tier. So if you want, you can try um, these prompts out and I can we can send them or something. Um, so you can try them out for yourself. Yeah, 
Yeah, this one actually reads a lot more like a step-by-step -step lesson plan for me. Uh, and it also gives an opportunity for, um, like if you were to put kids in groups or to have them do different things, like if they're gonna do writing activity or a, uh, something more of speaking or more of an assessment, like you, it, it lends itself to grouping. Um, yeah, so, so and it does call up the language of like argument. Yeah. Go ahead. Uh, Mike brings up a good point. Um, adding time factors for how many kids are grade level helps. Just wanted to call that out, like timing. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I'll just do one more sort of prompt and maybe we can incorporate that feedback we saw in the chat. So we're gonna do the same thing. This is like the third, what I'd call best, but again, you, you all might have other things you'd like to see and you can feel free to try it. I ask it to, the, the difference I have with this prompt is I ask it to target a specific uh, level four standard. And then, uh, sorry, can you help me understand the, the, the point that Mike made, adding time factors for how many kids are grade level? Or is um, that in terms I, of like one hour for 20 I'm students? Thinking, I'm thinking or, maybe like time breakdown, like how, how long each component will last, like five minutes for this component two minutes for this. Is that what you mean, Mike? I don't know if Mike's still there. That's how I interpreted it. Yeah. Or, Anyone you know, if you only in? have, or if you don't, if you only have 40 or 45 minutes, you know, what are, what are some pieces that you can cover in that one particular class that you may not, you know, you oh, may not yeah. be able to get to every single oh. thing too. Okay. I'll just yes, say it will keep yes. it simple tailor it for 45 minutes, for example. Um, but these are, again, excellent examples of how we can, you know, be very, very specific. Tailor it for 45 minutes, two hours, one hour, mm -hmm. hybrid, for example. Um, so I'll just run through this one and you'll see, uh, you know, sort of the, the last version. So- Yeah, um, Mike, Mike, Mike says both. Yeah, Mike said both. Yeah, because I know that my, te my supervisor is always looking for, okay, how many minutes do you expect them to do this portion of the lesson? versus this one. So like 10 minutes for this, 15 minutes for this, adding up to a 45 minute class like you have there. The other Absolutely. thing I really like to do with this is I tell it to put it in a chart because <laughs> I need my life in little boxes. So like it's giving you this whole little narrative, but if I say, um, you know, put this in a chart with timing on the, one of the columns, uh, it just reads a lot easier for me as a teacher. That's great. Let's try doing that right now. So I'll say, let's make two edits. My original prompt was gonna be add more details, but we could say, put the key parts of the lesson plan into a table for readability. And then I just have, you know, write the, rewrite the lesson plan to target this different level two standard. So let's see how well it does for that. And I am just loving the live on the spot iteration. And like that is again, <laughs> you know, again, we're teach we have to make this t-shirt. It's gonna maybe we'll have to jointly um, do it, but yeah. you know, that it's like look teachers are the original OG prompting. And look at this, mm -hmm. like we just right? iterating and changing. You guys are making it so much better. It's like, you know, student, you don't have the student submit their first draft of an essay. You know, they have multiple mm -hmm. iterations of that draft. You I want one of those t-shirts. I know, right? Uh, so then the other thing I want to know is, is there a way to copy the chart so that it shows up as a chart? Instead of like, when I've copied it, it'll show up in, um, probably it's, um, uh, you know, what do you call it? Like a computer formatting form, you know? So it shows up with the lines and, and gobbledygook in between things. Can you, can you copy that as a chart? It should. I just tried sharing it to a different this is what happened when i shared it to like oh. excel really quickly mm -hmm. so I, it should yeah. work um, yeah yeah so earlier today i did a chart and then i said download this as an excel file and it did and i nearly cried because it was literally 25 contacts and like, school districts and emails that i had had chat had chat gpt fine for me because it's all public information and i was like i would have spent all day on this and now it's in an excel file so I was really happy. Um, so that's an option too, yeah. Um, and so just to say, like when I talked to Muhammad earlier today, one of the things that 
in just like 15 minutes, I, I had this epiphany where I'm like, oh, I get it. Like, it's not that we're teaching chat GPT how to do this stuff, but we're actually getting better at being very specific about what we want and setting the context for it and maybe giving it an example. And then it can draw on a zillion points of data to come together to find this thing. So um, that's my goal is to figure out some of the really common tasks we do, especially for English learners, and be able to put the prompts together so we can do this more easily because every time you do a lesson for, and differentiate, it's like you're making three different lessons. It's like, it's exhausting to have to think of all of that. So um, the more exact we can be with prompts, the better it will be at giving us what we want. Yeah, absolutely. The, the metaphor I always use is imagine you have, you know, a brand new teacher's assistant, highly bright, great resume, but doesn't just doesn't hasn't learned yet the, the specifics of how you want your uh, what was that example we did earlier? The academic language objectives, the lesson plans, right. Taylor. And so it can, they can get your responses really quickly, but you have to be very precise and you have to be willing to coach them. And once, and in a 201 session, we can talk about ways to like codify it so you don't have to write the paragraph every time.